Hey guys and welcome to another tutorial on KiCad. Um, so I'm quite surprised I've never made a video about this, but in this video I'm going to talk about how to create your, create your own footprint. So we've done one with the symbols, it's your schematic, but today we're going to do one how to create a footprint in KiCad. Uh, so one of our subscribers asked us to make the HX7111, uh, so I'm going to show you an example of that. So guys, if you want anything else to help you guys with, just write in the comments. We do read it. Um, we do take into account what videos to make. Um, besides that, just enjoy, uh, learn with me, and let's get started. When you get to the main page of your KiCad, your main project page, you'll see on top here, we've got a schematics and PCB. So last time in another video, we made a symbol editor. So that's creating the symbol of your schematic. And today we can create a footprint in the footprint editor. So to create a footprint, we just click on this. It takes a while to load sometimes. So what it's doing now is actually loading all the footprint libraries because you're going to put your new library in the current library setup of KiCad. And there it is. Luckily for you, I can video edit and skip the wait that I just had to wait. But let's get started now. So you can see there's two different options. You can either use a footprint wizard or a new footprint. So the wizard I will make another video about, that is just something that's easier, quicker to do. Choosing Q Q QFN, QFB. So this is just basically a standard package that you don't need to generate yourself. But let's say you want to generate one yourself. You can push this button and we're going to call it the HX7111. And now you can see it already had a reference and the name. So the HX711 is an IC and all ICs normally in convention has U as a reference. So we can put that there. So U1, U2, U3. So here you can see the HX71 data sheet. So normally in a data sheet, you have to go at the bottom to get anything with PCB design. So you can see they are telling you how to lay out your PC design on the reference board. There's the schematic and then we can look if they've got a PCB layout or footprint for us. No, they don't. They've got a package. So the SOP16 package is kind of a generic package, so you will be able to use a wizard, but let's ignore that and do it ourselves. So what we do is, because it's a gener generic package, you can just Google for the footprint and you should get something. So when I Google it, so when I Google it, I get something like this. So here you can see the footprint dimensions. So most data sheets will have something like this at the end of a data sheet. So now let's just double check if it logically makes sense. So 1.27 is the pitch between the pins and 1.27 is the pitch between these pins. So that's good. Uh, I've got 0.76 times 1.1. Here we can see it's 0.48 max. That's fine. So it's a bit bigger, which is no problem at all. And our pins actually 6 minus 3.9, that's 2.1 divided by 2. Um, so you just take the max there minus the inside, and that gives you that distance. So 6 minus 3.9, 2.1 divided by 2 is 1.05. So that's perfect, as you can see. So that makes sense. 4.6, 4.1, so that's fine, or we'll work fine. So we can use this as our reference for the footprint. So these are the pads, the mechanical pads that will be mechanical copper pads that you'll solder on to create the, to make sure the component is stuck to the board. Um, so let's get started. So what we get, what do you have to know about creating a footprint is just different terms. So what we need is a pad. That's the copper where we soldered on. So on the top right here, you'll see pad. So when I click there, you can actually see it's giving me a through-all pad, but I want an SMD pad. So to do that, I double click on it and properties will open or I can highlight it like we know, push E and it opens as well. So we don't want a through-all, we want an SMD and we want a rectangle. So the size of the rectangle as we saw, as we saw is 1.1 by 0.76. My X is 1.1, 0.76. Great, so that is what we want. It's only on the top, so just make sure if I want at the bottom, it will be like that, but we're only focusing on the top. So many times you guys ask me, do you have to make a footprint for the bottom and the top? The answer is no. So when you create a footprint, always just do it on the one layer, because when you put it to the PCB, you can always flip it automatically. You never have to create a component for the top and the bottom, only for one. Now push okay, 
and there I've got my and then I've got my nice little pad. But now, so what I like to do is I first like to create a courtyard um, to show the dimensions of the component. So courtyard is basically just on the right here, see front courtyard. It's just when I place my component, then I know I should not place any other components close by. So I can just go courtyard. So this I'm going to do by looking at this and I can see 6 by 9.9. .9. So I'm going to just make a courtyard of those dimensions. E for properties. So I'll just make my starting point somewhere random. I'll make this and then I can copy this, paste it, and I'll make it 9. And that is my courtyard. So just imagine this is rotated 90 degrees. So another important thing is pin 1. So this dot is also very important. So to do that, we normally use silk. So this is preference, um, what you like. So I'll go silk layer, and I can just make a nice uh, dot here, should I say. You can change the size. Line thickness, make it nice and thick. And that's how you can just play with the to make a pin one dot. So now let's look at the footprint. So pin one is going to be on top, like we said. Put this here somewhere. We'll sort out the measures later. And we've got 16 pads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then another row. So let's just copy this. So you can see that the it's not snapping quite nicely. It's either or, so I can change the grid a bit. Uh, just make it 10 moles. And then you can see it's easier to move. We have to make sure that we follow this. So it must be 4.6 from one another. How do we do that? Is we can right click on here, on this one, sorry, right click position relative to so we can choose an item this one and say I wanted 4.6 away on the X but it must be equal in the Y and there we go so what you can see I did wrong was there is this 4.6 is between the edges so when I do 4.6 like I did now it's actually middle point to middle point so we've got to add the middle points and middle points so it's 1.1 divided by 2, 0.55. So we're going to add actually another 0.1. So 5.7. Let's see if that is better. Yeah, looks better. You can see that it looks a bit strange now with, it seems out of sync, but we'll fix it now. Remember, this is the, the courtyard. It's not the size of the component itself. So we took 6 by 9.9, so it's the whole output, output, the whole outline, but the component itself is actually just 3.9 and 9.9. .9. Let's change these numbers quickly before we forget. This is very important. These numbers are linked to your schematic numbers. So be careful on your schematic, creating your schematic symbol. In our previous video, we gave pin numbers and these pin numbers have to match these numbers. That's how they know what it's supposed to be like. So the pinning is always down, up. So this is 10 or nine. So great, so now we have to make it even again. So we know our pitch is 1.27. So what we can do is move position relative to, select our item, that one. So my X this time is zero, and this is 1.27. There we go. So the 1.27 is this pitch but we're actually looking at this. So it's 1.27. Now we do the same. Right click, push and relative, select item, that one, and we can just keep doing that. You can see it looks much better now. So now we do this side. Great, so now this distance is correct. Our distance between there is correct. But now it just seems a bit uneven. Let us draw the body as well now. So 3.9 by 9.9. .9. So this I normally do also on silk. Um, so you'll see it when we manufacture the PCB. 3.9, 9.9. E. Copy this if you want. Then we can 
not benign. So now you can see, now it's starting to look a bit more like a component. I can push Alt 3, I should probably have saved. And there you can see it's starting to look like something. We can also add a text if we want to, just to spice it up, HX711. And you'll see whatever I add will be become part of the part of the component, the silk wise. So now we just have to make sure that these are nicely evenly spaced how they're supposed to be. You can see the pads actually go out and then down. So it makes sense that these pads aren't actually right next to it. We just need to make sure that these gaps are a bit nicer, right? In real life, when you put a component on there, it's not going to care about the silk, it will fit, um, but it's always nice to make it look nice. Let's see if it, it's better now. So we've measure 1.05, 1.05, so that's nice. So we just have to move our pads a bit. I'm just going to move these pads a bit to the right. Like I said, your component, if these distance between this pad, that pad, and these distances are correct, your component will fit but we will just try to make it look nice. And the courtyard is also very important because you don't want any components close to it. So right click, let's just move exactly, let's try 0.12 and that looks nice. So what we can also do is add a 3D part to make sure everything looks fine. So let's look for a 3D part on the internet like we do. So like I mentioned earlier, the HX711 is actually a 16 pin, um, so we'll download a generic step file like this. So I like to go to GrabCAD, that's where I download most of my stuff. And then you can just push download, it will ask you to log in. And then I'll just download the step file, save it somewhere that you are familiar with. Don't do what I do, where I just put it in the downloads folder. <laughs> One thing you guys need to be careful for that I did not look at now is Keycad only takes step files, so you can see there's no step file here. So I cannot use this in my Keycad. So let's look for something else. Let's try this one. There you can see step file. So to add a step file, you have to go to your footprint properties on top here. And then you can see 3D settings. And now we can see, let's add. So I saved it in my working folder. Lumpot, YouTube, PCB tutorial, footprint, and there you can see it. There's my step file. And now I just have to rotate it a bit, so you can rotate it here. Yeah. Always get confused which is which axis. Move it down and up here. Yeah. And then you must just play a bit with the numbers. And that looks pretty good. Okay. So you can also make your own libraries. So when we want to save it, it wants to save it in a certain library. But I want to make a Plumpot library where I'm going to have all my components. So yeah, I'm just going to say Plumpot. And there I've created a global library. So now when I save it, I should be able to see Plumpot here and save it in a certain library. Let's hope. There we go, Plumpot. So this is now part of a Plumpot library. How cool is that? And that's it. So the most important part was make sure your pads are correct. Make sure your pads are equally spaced how they're supposed to be. Your pin one is very important and your IC, so for U for IC, R for resistor, C for capacitor. But now we have to link it to a schematic sometimes, to a symbol. So for example, if I just go, let's just quickly see, A for symbols, do they have HX? Yes, they do. So this is the bad boy we made. 
So if I double click on it, you'll see there's already a footprint. But now I can say, okay, I don't want that footprint. I want the one we made in Plumpot. That one, that one, double click. So now this has been changed. So when I double click on it, footprint, yeah, I click on the books and I can choose a footprint for it. So I want this one. Okay, and then when I update it, it's gonna re-annotate it. And there you can see it. So there is the footprint we just created. Nice, eh? Great, and that's how you create your own footprint. So just quickly to recap, you push this button, footprint editor, you will get into this, and then you use your pads here on the right hand side, and make sure the numbers are correct, because these numbers are linked to your schematic numbers that you created in our previous videos. And then you can add a 3D footprint by pushing this button, properties, 3D settings, add it, and then when you have a schematic, just double click on it, footprint, click on this library, and you can update what footprint you want to use to what, what symbol, schematic symbol. And that's it. If you have any questions, guys, please just comment below. Uh, any other videos you guys would like us to make. If this video was not helpful and you want us to improve something, explain something better, let us know. If it was helpful, please thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll keep making these videos, trying to help you guys, teaching you guys about PCB design and electronics in general. Guys, a fantastic day, fantastic week. Be safe, be healthy. Until next time. Bye.